then split, where David Dunn actually shows up. That took it way beyond just linking it to Unbreakable, and that immediately became exciting to me. David Dunn always represented the kind of ordinary man who reluctantly finds something extraordinary about himself. He didn't feel happy unless he was doing something that helped people. And so in Unbreakable, he talked about a grayness when he woke up, and now he sees something extraordinary in his life, and he has a meaning to it when he realizes he's this superhero. Right around here, they'll start walking by you. Stop. Notice the cop over here. I always enjoy working with Bruce. Bruce is a very familiar, easy character for me through the different films that we've done. Just kind of fall right into it. He's always been kind of the big brother in my life since I was a little kid, you know, and he's the one that took the big risk on me and protected me. You might see that in the movie, the sentimentality about the relationship between me and him. And cut and rehearsal. Great, great, great. It's just that simple. Bruce is the most chilled dude I've ever met in my life. He is so relaxed, but he's bringing such a heaviness to the part. He actually says his character doing the super thing that he does leaves him with a heaviness. And what I think is beautiful, and I haven't seen a lot in a superhero movie, is the weight and the toll it takes on him doing it. <laughs> the only thing he's really got in his life is his vigilante purpose and his son, and that's kind of it. They're looking for you pretty aggressively. Be real careful. I truly am a mastermind. He essentially is new in a way just because there's been so much time between when we last saw him and when we see him now. He's changed. I can tell he's given up. It's hard to see. Those poor people didn't deserve to die like that. I remember walking into the production office and seeing that chair that Knight had pulled out of his museum, and I just was like, go, go. That's the chair from Unbreakable. Samuel Jackson, I think he is uber professional. You have suffered and are now pure. That sounds like the bad guys teaming up. And cut. Love it. And he nails this character. Elijah Price is a man that has osteogenesis imperfecta, which is a bone disease where your bones are extremely brittle. And he's called Mr. Glass. And he's always wondered why he was born this way. And he finds meaning in the idea that Maybe I was born this way for a reason. Maybe I am the kind of person that comic books are written about. He pursues this theory about whether comic books are based on reality. Elijah is still very calculating. As long as you get throat line, we're good. Mm -hmm. All right, let's shoot. He's still strong in his conviction. I've known only pain. And I think he represents all of us as well, this idea of a marginalized character who is trying to find his place in the world and find an important place in the world. And that's something you really, really root for when you watch him in Glass. This is where they would paint you with big eyes and bubbles of confusion above your head. My name is Patricia. And I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing here. I don't want to be here. East is the highest form of human evolution. You can come at any second. Kevin is a guy that was abused horribly by his mother. As a result, his mind fragmented and uh, dissociated. And from that, 23 other people were born Kevin himself is somebody who's been in a bit of a coma, really, for large periods of his life. Kevin? He's a, he's a really wounded soul, and he's somebody that needs protecting. Now I'm going to get upset. Dennis is, how should we put this, a tortured soul. Hey, cut! That's why the altars came. They came to protect him. He's doubly unfortunate because within that group of individuals that live within the same body, he's been almost banished for large portions of his life. The Horde is never letting go of the light. 
first time I meet the Horde is a really nice moment. Getting him to trust Elijah through that small conversation we had. I'm here to see if the tales of the extraordinary being are real. A half man, half creature. I don't know anymore. You know, James is very versed in switching, you know, being able to go from one accent to another, one emotional state to another. He can flow into it. He's not the one that I need to be in the corner for 10 minutes. Action! I'm sorry, bro. It was impossible for me not to sort of shudder in awe every time James moved in and out of a, a different character. He's an actual genius actor who gave one of the great performances of any year in Split. What becomes tricky about playing many characters is when you have to transition from one end to the other. Oh, man! And I'm Mary Reynolds. We're twins. Oh, do you know I am tired of being sorry? Oh, I'm so amped! We almost got you, bro! One of the personalities that Kevin manifests is the Beast who is this kind of supernatural creature, half man, half beast character. You're trying to maintain the integrity of each and every single character on their own. You're meant to be playing somebody who's impervious to cold and who is like, doesn't feel anything and you're just standing in front of Bruce Willis and you're going, I'm the beast. But all you feel like is the wimp. They need to be distinct, not just for the sake of it, but for some truth. She said, I have one job to do, keep Kevin out of the light. You won't see him anymore. Your friends and family members have lost their perspective. I definitely felt the family members were super important to the architecture of the story and for us to fall in love with the characters. Elijah Price is my baby, who was born with osteogenesis. We've had a tough time of it, but we're survivors. Stay proud. Joseph Dunn is the son of David Dunn. Perhaps more importantly than his son, though, he's also the only person other than Elijah Price who knows that David has powers and believes in them as well. I know now. Know what? You have secret identity. Interestingly enough, Casey becomes an extension of Kevin Wendell Crump. Casey. Casey is a girl who unfortunately went through something that I don't think anyone should ever have to go through. She's resilient, she bounces back. In this movie, we find her, and she's different than from Split. They caught the guy who abducted you and murdered all those girls. She's really grown, and I think she's had this incredible experience, which, even though it was frightening and terrifying, I think it gave her the permission to be herself. Sarah Paulson plays the psychiatrist, Dr. Ellie Staple. Oh, we have a code three. Dr. Staple is a woman of incredible compassion who has a deep-seated belief that her way of thinking is an answer to some of the world's problems. You believe your father is a real-life superhero. What if he is an incredibly just man who's come to believe something that isn't sound? They had become extensions of, of their superhero loved ones. The audience may have a different opinion about that, but that's certainly where I stand with it.